Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, Guy took a look at his honeypot and uh, which scans that he received actually came from researchers that are scanning the internet for open ports. We do actually uh, have an API uh, that you can use to get a list of all the IP addresses that we consider researchers. I will add a link uh, to that API uh, to the show notes if you're interested. And of course, feedback is welcome. Defining what is a researcher is of course a little bit uh, tricky. These are not necessarily universities. Some of them are uh, companies that are scanning uh, the internet. Uh, some of the organizations are a little bit harder to define, but uh, they call themselves researchers, which uh, is really all it takes uh, to sort of be classified as a researcher in our feed. Next question that usually comes up is, should you block scans from researchers? Again, I don't think there's big harm in allowing them in. Uh, we don't really see a lot of real outright malicious stuff, but of course, that's a matter of how you define this. Uh, we had actually, I think uh, two years ago, uh, a research paper that one of our sans.edu students wrote where he looked at whether or not it matters if you are listed, for example, in Shodan, which is one of the sites we classify as researchers. And he didn't see a big difference here whether or not you are or are not listed, but probably worthwhile uh, doing this again and uh, seeing what this looks like now. Now, talking about uh, researchers, a group of researchers from SIDN Labs, Internet New Zealand, USC, and uh, ISI uh, have published an interesting uh, paper outlining a denial of service vulnerability in uh, DNS servers. Now, there are really uh, two parts to it. Uh, there is a first part that's a misconfiguration of zones. So that affects the authoritative name servers. But the real vulnerability that's then being used to take advantage of the misconfiguration is actually in the recursive name servers. So in essence, you'll have to patch some recursive name servers, but you also should check if any of your authoritative name servers suffer from these misconfigurations. And the Misconfiguration here essentially where you have uh, two zones that uh, sort of provide DNS services for each other, which is um, not that uncommon. But if you then have failures uh, to resolve some of the name servers, you can get stuck sort of in an infinite loop trying to gather all the information that you need to resolve uh, these host names. Two big names that apparently did misbehave here when trying to resolve domain names was uh, Google DNS as well as Cisco's Open DNS. Luckily, uh, many of uh, the very popular open source uh, DNS servers like Bind, Unbound, uh, Not DNS, and then also AWS's EC2 uh, does not appear to uh, be vulnerable as a uh, Cursor. Uh, these uh, researchers also published a quick tool, Cycle Hunter, uh, that will allow you to check your zones if you have any of these recursive uh, dependencies that could be abused uh, by these denial of service attacks. And apparently, uh, Earlier this year, a denial of service attack against the .nc, the New Zealand uh, top-level uh, domain, uh, took advantage of uh, this uh, behavior and vulnerable name servers may literally for hours uh, bombard authoritative name servers uh, with uh, queries. But well, we also have some patches to mention today. Foxit patched its PDF reader as well as its phantom PDF application. Vulnerabilities reach from denial of service uh, to arbitrary file deletion all the way to code execution. This affects the Windows version of uh, this software. Once you're patched, you should be running version 10.1.4. Prior versions are vulnerable. 
And last week, I mentioned uh, the controversy that was started by a researcher at the University of Minnesota uh, around uh, their work uh, that was referred to as hypocrite patches. Now, lots and forth and back about this. Looks like the Linux Foundation's Technical Advisory Board uh, will now investigate this incident and uh, try to figure out uh, what exactly happened here and what sanctions, if any, should uh, be used. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.